in the previous sessions we were discussing about uh, what are the forms of organizations in public sector public sector means that sector which is in the hands of control of government we have seen it can be categorized into three department undertaking statutory corporation and uh, government companies in the previous session we were discussing about uh, what is department undertaking and in this session we will be discussing about uh, statutory corporation another form of business organization in public sector the word statutory corporation statutory statutory is always something which is connected with the law and uh, in india laws are formed in parliament so statutory corporation when you are thinking about statutory corporation you have to understand that it is a form of business organization which is brought into existence by an act passed in the parliament it is brought into existence by an act passed in the parliament so parliament passes an act and as a result of that act if a particular business organization is coming into being we call it by the name statutory corporation rbi is a statutory corporation sbi is a statutory corporation lic is a statutory corporation so if you are looking into it you can see all these are brought into existence by an act which is passed in the parliament now coming on to details it is the act which is defining the powers functions rules and regulations so i said it is brought into existence by an act passed in the parliament and this act is defining what all things that organization is expected to do how it is to be done what are the powers it is having what are the things which it has to perform what are the rules it has to follow and how it is to be carried on all the details will be there all the minutest details will be there in the act that means the total working of organization is highly dependent on the act which is passed now coming on to another thing another benefit or another speciality is that when you look at statutory corporation it has the power of government because it is formed by an act passed in the parliament at the same time it has high amount of operational flexibility which is which a private business organization is having it is in the hands of government it is controlled by government but it has that benefit of of, of a private organization it has operational flexibility freedom is comparatively more when concerned with the uh, departmental undertaking when it is compared with the department undertaking here operational flexibility is more now going on to the features as i have said it is governed by provisions of the act which is passed in the parliament that means all the powers all the objects what why it is formed or what purpose it is formed everything will be explained in the act and it is uh, saying about the powers which that uh, corporation is having and the privileges it can exercise or it will be having all the details regarding the business organization statutory corporation will be mentioned in the act that is one feature another feature is that uh, government has it is fully owned by government that is that is a basic feature it is fully owned by government and business the government has ultimate financial responsibility that means government has uh, all the right over the financial aspects even though it is not interfering much government is having the power because it is brought into power brought into existence by government government has the financial responsibility and government has the right even to appropriate the profits of the firm appropriate profits of the firm and if there is losses government has to bear it nobody else will come for that 
government has the right to appropriate the profits government has to bear the losses but uh, at the same time it is having operational flexibility that is why we said it is having a combination power of a private uh, sector and public sector third one is that it is a body corporate that means it is having a separate existence it can sue and get sued it can purchase land uh, it can enter, enter into contracts in its name it can purchase name in it can purchase property in its name so like an artificial person it is a body corporate it has a separate legal entity from government it is acting separate it has a different entity that is why it is called a body corporate again it is usually independently financed what is the meaning of independently financed is that the the firm the statutory corporation can borrow funds from government or from public and they can uh, what to say use the revenues so financing can be either from government or from public their their freedom is there for statutory corporation as according to the act what has been said they can follow that so it is independently financed it doesn't have to uh, what to say wait for uh, an apportion from the budget and all it can raise finance for its working either from government or from public it uh, it is following the same accounting and audit procedures applicable to government departments that is something which is connected with the government it is following the uh, accounting procedures uh, sorry it is not it is not it is not uh, following it is not following the government procedures is not followed same accounting procedures applicable to government departments is not followed is not subject to same audit and accounting procedures uh, i forgot to write that so it is not following the government uh, what to say government accounting and auditing procedures because it is not directly under the department it is having a separate existence as i have said so that is something which we have to keep in mind even though it is of government it is not following because it is a separate entity it is having a separate existence from government it is not uh, what to say directly under the control of a particular department or ministry but that that is means that they are unaccountable they have to be accountable that we will discuss later again employees are not a government or civil servants employees are taken under what is the uh, uh, rights or powers given in the act what is mentioned in the act regarding taking in an employee and all so need not be government employees given uh, need not be uh, government employees need not be civil servants but at times there can be higher posts can be occupied by certain officers from government and uh, in deputation for some time there can be persons coming in to take over some positions but usually it is not a government employees or civil servants employees are not that now coming on to merits coming on to merits as i have said it is having high operational flexibility it is having high operational flexibility that means it is not having it is not expected to have much control from government as it is independently financed as powers rights and everything is mentioned in the act government need not go behind the statutory corporation it is free comparatively free when compared with the department undertaking it is comparatively free in operations in carrying out operations there is flexibility another thing is that government interference are less in financial matters because they can be independently financed finance finances raised from public or from government and they have the right to use the 
revenues for repaying that. So, we can say that up to a level, up to a level interference in financial matters is less in case of statutory corporation. Third one is that uh, uh, it is autonomous in nature that means there is high degree of freedom. Decisions can be taken by them, but whenever decisions are taken, we have to check out or we have to see that it is as according to the powers mentioned in the act. So, they uh, what to say in act there are certain even though I said there is operational freedom it is not under department certain approvals have to come from concerned departments. For example, if something is to be decided in Reserve Bank of India, finance, the finance minister, finance ministry, certain areas, it has to be approved by the parliament through finance, finance ministry and all. So, in such cases, some, in some cases, the, there need to be uh, approvals, but comparatively, it is autonomous in nature. Majority of the cases, they have the freedom to take decisions. And another thing is that uh, what to say, it is a valuable instrument for economic development because of the reason as I have discussed in the starting itself, it is having a combined power of government and private enterprises. So, up to a level development, uh, it is it can contribute to economy in a greater level, it can contribute to economy in a greater level. So, in that way what we can say is that it is a valuable instrument for economic development, it helps in economic development. Now, coming on to the demerits, actually when we are discussing about demerits, many of the merits which we have said is being contradicted. Because in actual uh, merits is uh, not uh, fully practiced, many of the merits is not fully practiced. The first one itself says that uh, actions are subject to too many roles and regulations as we even though when we are saying there is operational flexibility, there are too many uh, rules and regulations uh, which is mentioned in the act when we say even though when we say it is uh, having operational flexibility too many regulations too many rules are there mentioned in the act which can create a trouble for or which can uh, bring a control for the flexibility of the organization in that way that's a demerit even in the reality many a times this complete operational flexibility is not there in statutory corporation. Government and political interference as huge funds are involved. We said financial independence is there, it can raise its own finance, but many a times government usually interfere and at times political parties also or politic, uh, if the government is run by a political party, that party also may include because there is huge amounts coming in and being utilized. So, there is a chance of interference of government as well as political parties. Then there is a chance of corruption because this is dealing with public. I said uh, along with the powers of government, it is also having a power of private corporation or private firms. So, automatically there is a chance for corruption to be there and another thing is that freedom can be curbed when advisors are appointed. You should in statutory corporation government appoints advisors and many a times this advisors used to be uh, persons uh, who may not be having that much of idea or who are very strictly following some of the political agendas and all. So, many a times when decisions have to be taken, if this advisors are not agreeing with that, that can create a trouble. So, many a times the freedom of statutory corporation can be curbed with the appointment of advisors. So, this is what is statutory corporation.